This video is going to be going over some tricks I learned during the creation of my Apollo 13 documentary. This video will show you behind the scenes of 3D animation software and how you can use it to make realistic space animations. I'll be using Blender in order to create the animations, and Blender is free if you want to try it out for yourself. The first thing we need for our spacecraft animation is of course the spacecraft. I'm going to be modeling the entire Saturn V rocket for my Apollo 13 animation. Fortunately, there are blueprints for most spacecraft that you can find to put into your Blender scene to use as a reference image. You can import your blueprint into Blender and then use the orthographic view mode to line up your 3D modeling to the blueprint. You can press these buttons up here to enter orthographic mode. You can also hold Alt, then hold down middle click, and then swipe in the direction you want to be shown orthographically. You can come down into this section and change the image's opacity and whether it should be on top. Delete the cube. Add a cube. We can create each of the parts by matching the shapes to the blueprint. There'll be some guessing as you are trying to turn a 2D image into a 3D model, but using real life reference photos will definitely help answer some of those questions. I'm going to be doing the how to draw an owl thing this tutorial, so I'm not going to be going too far into the weeds with how to model with Blender because there are better tutorials for that. This one's just going to be an overview with how I use Blender, but it should give you some good information even if you are a beginner. Spacecraft are made of a bunch of unusual shapes, so attempting to model something like the Lunar Module without a blueprint would be very difficult, so I'd definitely use them if they're available. All you have to do now is model the shapes to fit the blueprint. By using the blueprint, all of the parts will be in the right place and proportion. To make the engine bells, you can add a cylinder, select it, and press tab to go into edit mode, and then press Ctrl R to add a loop cut, and use your mouse wheel to add a bunch of them. This will give us some geometry to work with for the next step. We need to bend the engine bell to the shape of the blueprint. For this, we can use proportional editing. Go up here and click on the proportional editing button. You can also press O on your keyboard to toggle this. By default, selecting one point and moving it will only move that one point. What proportional editing does is it also moves the points around it. We will use this to bend the engine bell into place. While in editing mode by pressing tab, you can press these buttons in the section at the top left to tell Blender that you want to select either vertices, edges, or faces. You can also change these by pressing 1, 2, or 3 on the top bar of numbers on your keyboard. Press 2 to start editing just the edges. Select all of the points at the very bottom by holding Alt and clicking on the bottom edge. This will select the entire loop. Now with proportional editing on, we can hit S to scale up the bottom edge that we've just selected. But there's a problem. By scaling everything like this, some parts of the engine bell extend too far upward and beyond what we want for the shape of the engine bell. This is because we're scaling these vertices in all directions, upwards just as much as sideways. We only want these vertices to move sideways or outwards and exclude the upward scaling. We can do this by bringing up the scaling tool with shift spacebar. Then hit S. This brings up a gizmo that lets you scale separately along different axes. We want to scale in just the x and y directions, but we want it to be even. You can do that by clicking and dragging on this box between the two axes. Now with proportional editing on and the entire bottom ring selected, you can click and drag the box to scale in just the x and y directions. If you go into orthographic view mode, you won't be able to see this box anymore, but you can just hold shift and click and drag on the axis you want to exclude for the same thing. While still holding down left click from the scaling, you can scroll your mouse wheel to make the proportional editing area bigger and match the shape. If it's hard to match the shape, you can open the proportional editing menu and change the mode it uses. If you end up with a shape you don't like, you can always hit Ctrl Z to go back a few steps and try again. If you get something close enough, you can select sections in the middle and do the same thing. You definitely want to use curves to create the wires and pipes. This will give you a lot more control than trying to bend a mesh into shape. You can go into the geometry section here and change its size. Look at real life photos of your spacecraft too. Space hardware is cool and so people tend to take a lot of pictures of it. There are a lot of little details in the real life spacecraft that aren't picked up in the blueprints like the materials. We can use these reference photos to create those materials and add them to our objects. I like to make my materials procedurally because it gives me the most control, but that does take some knowledge of how Blender's node system works. Most of the materials are just a simple metal, but there are some special materials like the mylar insulation on the lunar module. We can make the material metal in the same color. Now we need to put the little crinkles in the material to make it look like mylar. Add a noise texture which will serve as our random crinkles. Plug that into the height of a bump map node and plug that into the normal so that the surface looks crinkly and not flat. Normals refer to the direction that a face is pointing. When we hit render, light will hit the material and bounce off the surface. By default, materials don't have a texture for the normal so the light will reflect the same way across the entire surface. By giving the material a texture for the normals, we're telling Blender to reflect the light that hits it in different directions depending on the texture that we gave it. This simulates how light would react to a surface that isn't flat. We're using the normal so that we don't have to add any geometry to the model, but it will still reflect light as if it were crinkly. We can then use the texture node to give us control over what the crinkles look like. 
If you're doing spacecraft animations, you'll probably need models for the Earth and Moon. I'll have a link in the description to a NASA website that has high resolution satellite images of both the Earth and Moon. It's a great resource for things like this because Earth comes with separate maps for things like color, height, water, clouds, and more. If you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create the Earth model, I'll also leave a link to Blender Guru's tutorial on how to create one. The moon is a lot simpler, so I can cover this one to show the process. This one only needs two maps, color and height. Press shift space and add a UV sphere. Once you've added a sphere, a menu will pop up in the bottom left of the scene. From here, you can turn up the resolution of the UV sphere. Turn it up to be a fairly high resolution. We're gonna need this extra geometry to add the height map later. Right click, shade smooth. We're gonna give the sphere a material, add the color map, and then plug it into the color. Right now our moon is perfectly round and smooth. Turn the roughness all the way up. Fortunately, NASA's moon textures also come with a height map of each of the moon's features. We want to use this map to tell Blender to move each of the points upwards based on what the height map tells it. This will let each of the craters catch light and cast shadows. To do this, we can use displacement. Add the height map and turn the setting to non-color data. Add a displacement node and plug the height map into the displacement node. Then, plug the displacement node into the displacement output for the material. Nothing will change because we still need to tell Blender to actually use this displacement map. In the Material tab under Settings, click Bump Only and change it to Displacement and Bump. Blender will now displace each of the points based on the height map. It's probably going to displace way too much to start, so just tweak the height on the node to make it look realistic. If there are areas that look too low poly or you want to increase the resolution of the height map, you can go to the Modifiers tab and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. This will add more points in between the points we already have, which will give the height map more resolution to work with. Don't bring this one up too high or else you'll eventually crash. Now with our models done, we can move to the animation. Luckily for us, people tend to try to avoid having many moving parts on a spacecraft, so the animation for this is going to be pretty easy compared to the modeling. Most of the time when parts do move, they tend to be things like simple hinges that are easy to animate with just a few keyframes. The Saturn V rocket that I'm modeling is a multi-stage spacecraft that uses explosives to separate each of the stages. During the separation of the stages, the explosives kick up particles that we can see in the real-life footage here. I'm definitely going to want to recreate that. We can use Blender's particle system to do that. We can add any object and turn it into a particle emitter in the particle tab here. Put it where you want the particles to be emitting from. We're in space, so turn the gravity and air resistance off. We also want to create an object that will become our particles. I'm going to use an icosphere and shade it smooth. We can then go into the particle settings and set the icosphere object to be our particle. We can also randomize the size of each particle here to give it some variation. Now all we need to do is set the particle emission range to be a few frames right when the stages separate. Make sure you're rendering with motion blur on because the particles are going to show that. The dark side of the spacecraft is harder to see and tends to blend in with space so I'm going to add in an edge light which will help bring out its silhouette. Once we have our animation done, we can render it out. Blender will calculate the lighting for one frame of the video and then move on to the next. It will then store each of the frames in one of your folders as an image sequence. I render out in Blender's Cycles rendering engine which will use ray tracing to get physically accurate lighting. This also means that it will take a lot longer to render but it's definitely worth it for realism. Instead of rendering the frames in PNG, I set my renders to save as a file format called OpenEXR. The reason for this is that PNG does not store the brightness data for the images. OpenEXR does. This allows us to do things like change the exposure and add bloom after the render is completed. I use this to composite after the render in a separate Blender save instead of during the render, which means I won't have to re-render the entire scene if I don't like the exposure or bloom. Now I'm going to add that bloom. We can do that inside of Blender's compositing section. Import the image sequence into the compositing section and plug it into a glare node and tweak the settings until it looks right. This is why it's important to render in OpenEXR if you want to do this, because the glare node uses the brightness data from the image to add bloom. Bloom is incredibly important in space scenes because the brightness difference between a spacecraft in the sun and the darkness of space will make effects like bloom very visible. I like to also have a glare node set to streaks and add them together. I also like to finish my compositing setup with a lens distortion node that I can use to create a subtle chromatic aberration effect. We can now render this image sequence with bloom as a PNG into a separate folder. The bloom effects will now be baked into the image sequence whenever we render this one. We can then take this image sequence and put it into DaVinci Resolve which should recognize it as an image sequence. It can now play this image sequence as a video. Repeat all the steps for every single scene in the video and eventually you'll have a full animation. If you want to see my full animation, it'll be the first link in the description. Feel free to contact me through email or discord if you have any 3D animation or modeling work you want done. I'll have my full Saturn V rocket model on my Patreon page when I get that set up. Thanks for watching!